In this session, we'll talk about how to write the process data and uncertainties section. Here is an example of the process data table for my previous student. As you can see, the formatting is very similar to the raw data table where you will include, of course, the quantity and also this symbol with the units for all the things that you want to talk about. And there are times where you may have the absolute uncertainty to be the same for the same quantity, then you can just put it in the column head like raw data table. In a case where you have different uh, percentage error or absolute error, then you can put it into a separate column, which of course this value will be calculated one by. In a case maybe your dependent variable cannot be measured directly. For example, if I want to find the density as my dependent variable I probably have to measure the mass and also measure the volume first and therefore I can uh, calculate each trial's uh, density and then I can put it into the process data other than that you may also need to think about later on when you try to plot the graph you want to plot a linearized graph and so what you do is when you look at your framework you should find out the relationship between your independent variable and dependent variable how they can be linearized so for this student uh, he finds out earlier that uh, somehow del uh, sorry square root h is proportional to s so that's why you can see in his process data table he deliberately want to find the square root of h even though he measure h only at the beginning in the raw data table if you don't know how to linearize the equation that you found, try to watch the video from Chris Stoner. I'll put the link in the description below. After you finish the process data table, you should also provide the sample calculation, especially for error propagation. So showing how you can calculate all the values in your table. For some simple calculation like or simply square rooting the h, uh, those would not be required. Even in the IV exam, they said uh, taking the average is not required. Although I would say um, if you have space, then you can still include it. Most of the propagation, you can actually use the equations that you learn in chapter 1 to deal with it. So here I would not uh, explain this again since you have learned it in chapter 1. In some cases, however, you may be having some other special mathematical function, for example, trigonometry like sine function, or log function, or exponential function, then uh, these uncertainties rule may not apply directly. You cannot use actually. So let me teach you how you can do that to find the uncertainties of those function. If you try how to find out the equation, that is to find the error of these kind of special function, then you should find something like this, a chart like this. So you can quote the source of this and uh, you can simply use the error equation. All right. So uh, you may not understand why it is the equation like this because that involves something uh, in mathematics called the partial differentiation. In fact, the equation that you learned in chapter one also required partial differentiation and it's actually an approximation so you did not actually accurate and account for 100% of the error it's just a good enough deal of absolute error only anyway so let's take a look here um, it means that if you have log function or exponential function or this kind of trigonometry function you will be sticking with these right so f is like the function itself and then a is whatever is substitute into that function so let's say if you do sine function then uh, fx will equal to sine x and let's say you have a certain measurement that is 30 degree plus or minus 0 0.5 degree uh, using the proper method let me just talk about proper method first what you do according to our method here is delta f that means the absolute uncertainty of the whole thing sine x will equal to delta A times cosine A. So in that case, it would be cosine 30 degree times 
0.5 degree in radian and that will be equal to this value so 7.5 something times 10 to the power of negative 3 this is what I call the proper method okay uh, so I would say if you do, th do it this way it, as a marker I'll actually appreciate you more because uh, you showed me how like you personally engage and try to find a more accurate way to define the error if you are not mathematically strong uh, or you don't want to spend too much time to to deal with this there's another alternative I would say is also uh, being acceptable in IP physics and I call this an intuitive method alright so the intuitive method is really intuitive so what you do is think about that uh, sine x is what you want to find at the end and uh, when you do the measurement x is plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees so that is to say x could be in the worst case 30.5 degree or 29.5 degree and so what you can do since uh, you know sine function is a monotonic function within at least at least within 90 degrees so uh, you can simply substitute these two values into it and you'll find the maximum and minimum bound of sine x for this value so that would be in the range of these two and so what you can do uh, is you can simply use the so-called half range method that we learned in chapter 1 which is just minus them divide by 2 and actually you find you could find the value of these which to be honest is very close enough so I would say uh, both way I would say both way would be accepted and if you could do the proper method then do the proper method if not then you can stick with the intuitive so that will be same for uh, the exponential and log function as well